Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to What The Math. Uh, now this is my first uh, post uh, catastrophe, post laptop disaster of 2016 video that I'm going to be basically making using my iPad and um, I'm going to actually review the tools I'm using for, for all of this in uh, one of the future videos when my laptop is fixed. But anyway, so what is this video going to be about? Well, as you can see, it's going to be about galaxies and specifically about galactic collisions. Now let me see if I can actually, hey, look at that, I can even zoom in. Uh, so we're actually talking about something very specific and it's a kind of a continuation of a previous video I've made maybe a few months ago and this was about uh, galactic collisions. Now let's see if I can actually draw here so I can possibly kind of give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about. So just to summarize that previous video, what I was basically talking about in that video and let me just actually go to a slightly different slide here. I think I can actually just just go to a new slide by clicking this button. All right, so let's see if this actually works. So what I was talking about is we have a sun somewhere in the middle. And uh, basically, um, I was looking at the chances of sun colliding with some other star as our galaxies collide together. Now, I'm, here I'm talking about two specific galaxies. I'm actually talking about the Milky Way galaxy, which is, of course, our own galaxy and uh, the Andromeda galaxy. And this will actually happen sometime in the future, about uh, 2.5 to 3 billion years in the future. So specifically what is going to happen is kind of like this. Basically we have Milky Way, very roughly drawn. Andromeda, very roughly drawn. It's a little bit bigger actually. And they will basically slowly approach each other and in the next three-ish billion years, they're going to uh, collide and sort of mix together where uh, at some point, basically every single star in the Andromeda galaxy and every single star in the Milky Way galaxy is going to kind of mix all together, creating this super galaxy that we don't really have a good name for yet, but I think some people call it Milkomeda, or I guess you can kind of try to uh, how do you even spell this? Milko, Milkiomeda. Sure, that's that's not totally correct, but you know what? Uh, there's no better way for it. Anyway, so um, basically, somewhere inside here, there's going to be our sun. And what I actually discussed in the previous video is, uh, you know, what is the chance that our sun is going to collide with one of the other stars or with really anything else for that matter, and that essentially is going to be destroyed by that collision. Now here's actually a very, very beautiful photo of the Andromeda galaxy that we actually uh, have today. Uh, and I accidentally drew on this. I really was not looking for that. Here we go, that I was actually going to zoom in. Um, and um, this is what we kind of see right now. It's quite far away from us actually, uh, but at some point it will collide with us, creating a beautiful mixture of two galaxies. Um, and so when this happens, what it is, or what was the chance that we found? Well, it was actually very, very low. It's uh, less than, 0.01%. It was ridiculously low that anything will happen to our beautiful sun, even if, even if every single star, every single star from this Andromeda galaxy, and specifically here we're talking about a trillion stars, and this is actually a very big number, it has 12 zeros, a trillion stars passes through, uh, or I guess, uh, close to our, our solar system. So, uh, that video w was made uh, a few months ago. You can t take a look at it. It's kind of long, actually. It does use a lot of math. But in this video, I actually wanted to focus on something else. I wanted to see a slightly different problem. And here, we're going to t look at uh, the following problem. And the problem is this. I want to find out um, what distance will something pass by uh, close to our sun uh, with a 50-50 chance. All right, so what, I'm, what I mean is this. We know there's going to be our sun in the middle. Here's our sun. And we know that uh, as those stars, as those trillion of stars, and that's actually a very, very overestimated amount because there's no way our sun can pass uh, with, uh, through so many uh, star systems. But uh, let's just say that it happens. So as those trillion stars uh, pass close to our system, what is uh, the distance from our sun at which point there's a 50% chance that something will actually pass? 
there's a 50% chance. So um, in other words, I want to find out uh, a distance, this distance right here, of the closest star that will pass to us at some point when the when those galaxies collide with a 50% chance. So obviously we can find a higher percent chance later on, but I just want to know, you know, a 50-50 chance that a certain star will definitely pass at this certain distance. Now I've already, I've already actually done the calculations and I kind of know the rough estimate of this distance, but uh, you know, take a guess. What do you think it is? How do you think, how far do you think it is that something will pass close to us, specifically a star, and um, if the star passes, what do you think will happen? And uh, before I get my hands back on the Universe Sandbox 2, I won't be able to show you what happens, but I will be able to find the distance here that we're going to call X. And this is a horrible X, but here we go, X. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's talk about this uh, a little bit more. Starting with this beautiful picture right here, and basically here we have the closest neighbors to our sun, and here the closest neighbor is, of course, uh, the beautiful Proxima, uh, sorry, Alpha Centauri, with Proxima Centauri being the closest. Um, the distance here is just over 4.1 light years. And um, it's basically the closest star. This is the distance we assumed when we were trying to find out the probability of uh, the collision with another star. Uh, but today we're, we're going to take a look at something slightly more different. Basically, we're going to look at um, the following situation. And this, of course, goes back to our geometric and also our algebraic formulas. This is the sun once again. We're going to create a kind of imaginary sphere. And this is obviously the sphere with a 50% chance of encountering another star. Uh, what we are looking for is, of course, this radius right here known as x. Now, this is a distance from our sun to the star that will pass us with a 50% chance. Um, I, in the previous video, assumed that the size of our sun, even though it's technically 700,000 um, kilometers in radius, I assumed it was just kind of one unit for the simplicity of calculations because I actually removed some of the zeros uh, from that calculation. And then I also uh, made an assumption that basically because it's a sphere here, the actual um, volume formula is 4 3rd pi r cubed to find the volume of this sphere essentially. Um, and uh, this is what we needed to find our probability. And so here we can actually take a look at probability again. Basically, um, to find the probability of you know this situation, you would basically take the volume of the sun, which in this case it was just going to be four thirds pi um, r cube of the sun. But since r cube in this case is one, it's just going to be one. So I can actually technically erase this because it's just going to be one. Uh, and all of this is going to be divided by the total volume of the big big sphere right here, this big whole ball thingy. Uh, and this will be 4 thirds pi, and this, this is r. So we're actually going to be using x cubed. Now, this might not make sense f uh, to some of you if you haven't done geometry yet, but basically this is dividing the smallest volume of the sphere by the biggest volume of the sphere to try to figure out the total probability. And because this is math, we can actually cross all of this out to get 1 over x cube. Now, that's the probability of uh, basically a star approaching um, with a 50% chance, but obviously this is not done yet. And just like in the previous video, uh, I kind of tried to explain that this is essentially going to be a very, very small number. This is essentially going to give you something like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 23 zeros, uh, and then at the end there's going to be 1 uh, or something, some kind of a number. And this is essentially a chance of uh, this happening. But we're looking for, uh, in order for us to actually make this a probability problem, we're looking for a chance of it not happening. Now, you may not really get this yet if you haven't done probability yet, but basically what we're looking for is this. In short, we're looking for the probability of something happening. This is, of course, going to be a number that's going to look like this. Dum, 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 dum. Uh, now, that's uh, this particular situation right here. This is essentially the probability. I'm going to write it here. Probability of uh, only one star, of one star passing at this sort of range, at this vicinity. But because uh, Andromeda Galaxy has so many stars, there's actually a, at least a trillion stars, which is, of course, the number with um, 12 zeros. We need to rewrite this. I'm going to actually go right here and rewrite this problem slightly different. It's essentially, it's going to look like this now. It's going to be 1 minus 1 over x cubed, and this is where math gets a little bit more complicated, to the power of trillion. 
Now this right here would give us, uh, wait, I'm missing zeros, I think, three, 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 okay, good. This is actually would give us the answer to that previous problem that I did in the uh, previous video, where essentially it would show us the probability of um, star passing in that region. But because we don't actually have x, because we're actually technically looking for x, we're, we're looking for this number, this, we're not actually done yet. We now have to use something a little bit more complex, something that is known in math as logarithms. Now, they're actually not as difficult as they sound because um, let me just quickly explain to you what we're going to do. In logarithms, there's actually a really interesting rule, and this rule is known as, I actually forgot, I think it's called exponent rule, but basically we just say there's a logarithm of um, a number, or just say number four, and it has like a, an exponent here to the power of three. The rule is this, the rule is actually really simple. You can take this number, you can actually just take this number, and I'll just make it yellow, uh, take this number and put it right in front. So it will actually give you three log four, um, and the logarithms in general refer to exponents, so if you don't really know what they mean, um, there's always a button for you on the calculator that you can just press. Um, and so going back to that problem, of course, uh, we're going to rewrite this once again as um, essentially this. So 1 minus 1 x cubed, then there's going to be a trillion here, which is a lot of zeros. And um, we're actually, what we're looking for is a logarithm. Now. In the beginning, we made an assumption that basically the, the probability of this event happening is 50%. So essentially, we're looking for a 50% chance of a collision. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to make this 0 0.05. This refers to the 50% chance of a collision. So what this uh, currently is showing you is um, really two things. We're saying that the probability of essentially our sun uh, colliding, or not colliding, but having a near encounter with some sort of an object uh, after a trillion attempts is 0.5%. This is essentially what this formula is saying. And uh, that's really almost it, except of course we need, now need to do logs, we need to do logarithms. And in math, you can basically do whatever you want to um, the equality as long as you do the same thing to both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a log here and we're also going to add a log here. This is, of course, uh, what you would find on your calculator as well. So let me just rewrite this. It's now going to look like this. Log of 1 minus 1 over x cubed to the trillionth power. And all of this, uh, am I missing zeros again? I think so, but that's okay. All of this equals to log of 0 0.05. Uh, and so uh, we're basically almost done here. So we now just need to kind of rearrange the equation and do the calculation. If you look at this uh, rule right here, you'll realize that we can put this in front. And what we'll get is this. One trillion in front. This is 12 zeros. And this will be followed by log, and I'm actually going to change that little bracket into um, something else for a second. I'm just going to name it log y, uh, for reason of not really needing to rewrite this whole bracket one more time, because it's not going to actually help us yet. So why is this bracket? Um, and so yeah, uh, 1 trillion multiplied by log y equals to log of 0.5. And uh, now, if I actually go down here, I can rewrite this as uh, log of y equals to log of 0.5 divided by a trillion. And we're almost done here. We just have to uh, go back to the definition of a log and realize that what this means, what this log here represents is um, this is a logarithm with a base of 10 and the number y is its final answer and it will equal to this number that we can actually find using calculator. It's a very, 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 very small number that's going to have zero followed by lots of lots of lots of zeros and then there's going to be something else at the end. You can try to calculate this yourself, just use a calculator. Not all calculators can actually do it because it's a, it's a very small number, but you should have like something at the end. I think it starts with like a three or something. Uh, and so that's almost done. That's basically what this will give us. Uh, however, we need to now uh, basically look at this again. And so what do we have here? We have uh, a base of 10, 
we're going to rewrite this as exponents. This is our exponent, so it's like 0 0.0000000 something something, possibly 3, um, equals to this final number called y. Now, this y, of course, is this right here. So we're going to basically rewrite this once again. And I think we get something that looks like this. So this is 10 to the power of very, very, very small number with a 3 at the end equals to 1 minus 1 over x cubed. Now, this is almost, uh, we're almost finished. Uh, basically, now what we need to do is take this 1 and subtract that 1 from this number. And then we're going to rearrange the equation and make it look like this. So that number that you had as 10, it's going to turn into something that looks like this. It's going to be 0 0.999999 something. This will be um, subtracted from 1. Or actually, I should rewrite this a little bit different. It's going to be the other way around. Uh, it's actually 1 minus 0 0.99999. And all of this will actually equal to 1 divided by x cubed. And just to save you some time, once you actually solve for x here, you'll get a number that kind of looks something like this. 11,300. This is very, very rough, but this is what x will be here. Uh, now, what does this x represent? Remember, we originally assumed that our sun was 1, and then here was the x. This was the sort of the radius, um, or not the radius, but the distance from our sun to the star that will hypothetically pass by uh, with a 50% chance of, um, of our sun. Now, this doesn't actually show you the distance yet. This just shows you the uh, sort of the distance in relation to, obviously, our sun, which is 1. Now, we used unit 1, but the sun is actually not, this, obviously it's not 1, it's actually 700,000 kilometers in radius. So the last step we have to do here is we have to take this number and multiply it with this number. And this will give you the total distance known as x. If you actually multiply it, you'll get a relatively large number, and um, this is sort of equivalent to approximately, I think it was 82 astronomical units-ish. So this distance right here is something like, eight, I'll just say 80, 80 astronomical units, which is about um, two and a half times more than the distance from Pluto to, to the Sun. It's uh, also four times bigger than the distance from Neptune to the Sun, and it's basically 80%, uh, not 80%, but 80 times the distance of Sun from the Sun. Uh, it's not Sun, Earth from the Sun. So it's a very, very far distance. Um, it is, however, close enough that if the star is massive enough, if this is actually a massive star that passes by, uh, that it may influence our solar system and it may cause some uh, strange things to happen. Like, for example, some of the planets might change their orbits. But uh, because it's relatively far away from Earth, it's very likely not going to affect Earth as much. And this is, a, once again, 50% chance. And also, this is, once again, assuming that a trillion stars actually pass by close enough. So this is after a trillion trials. In reality, this, this actual number is going to be much smaller, possibly as small as like a billion. I might actually have to erase three zeros. In which case, um, this, of course, will actually grow and become much, much bigger. It's going to be a much, much bigger number than it is right now. But in an, in an extreme sort of situation, um, in, in the worst possible scenario, 50% chance uh, of something passing within that distance, that distance is, of course, going to be 80 astronomical units. Now, this might have been uh, more difficult math, and hopefully those of you who understood it may have enjoyed this video, but if you haven't, I'm really sorry. I am uh, going to try different things here. I'm going to try to explore these uh, various um, app apps I have on my iPad just to see if I can make more different educational videos that you might actually learn something from in the future. And uh, obviously, my microphone is a little bit worse than usual, too, because my uh, actual original microphone doesn't connect to my iPad. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to this video and possibly even share with someone that you think may enjoy all kinds of space stuff, all kinds of uh, math stuff, and all kinds of learning stuff uh, that may actually uh, teach you stuff about stuff, right? 
I use the word stuff like seven times now. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. My apologies for this slight uh, inconvenience and see you in the next video. Game you later and as always, bye bye.